Good morning and welcome to worship once again online. Um, strange for a pastor as well as might be strange for you, though you may be used to looking at a screen a lot. Um, we don't know when this is going to end, but we continue to pray and hope and worship and, and try to follow instructions uh, to be safe during the CBID-19. Um, one of the concerns that has been raised by some, or the questions I should say, and even by our pastors in our circuit as we have shared and discussed things over these last couple of weeks, is the issue of Lord's Supper and Holy Communion. Um, to do it in a virtual kind of way just doesn't fit. It's not the recommendation uh, of our uh, theological commission of the Senate. They've even put out some words on that. But what I would like to offer, we can still, people still can come and gather in very small groups that on Monday, Thursday, I would make myself available uh, to members of the congregation, both uh, in the morning, uh, at times or afternoons. And maybe we'll have Matt uh, send out a list of times availability and people could sign up and we could let you know if that is a very you know if we're still confined by that time and it looks like that might happen uh, we don't know but uh, I have a suspicion Holy Week is going to be very disappointing in terms of not being able to get together but I would make myself available uh, if anybody wants to come for Holy Communion as long as you don't have more than nine uh, in the pew and we just do it very nicely in about a 15 minute um, devotion time uh, with the Lord's Supper. Um, so if that's interesting, interested, uh, interesting for some people or you would like it and really feel that need, we do not want to deny ourselves that. Uh, so call the office or call my home or email in any way, shape, or form, and we'll start setting up some times for people to come by. Uh, but I'd like to focus it on Monday, Thursday, which is very um, important in the life of the church is when the Lord's Supper was instituted for us. So let us know that, and uh, now we will begin our worship uh, with our first hymn. Uh, we thank Paul Creed for coming in and playing and leading our hymns um, this morning. God be with you as we worship him.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, at whom is life now and forever, through your Son's suffering and death, you have given us victory over all we ever need, over fear, over sin, eternal death, and the power of the devil. Breathe into our bones and our souls your life-giving word, that we rejoice in your forgiveness and serve you and others in love and faithfulness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our readings for this Sunday, the first reading, the Old Testament lesson, is taken from Ezekiel chapter 37, where he talks about the valley of dry bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, they were very, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was the sound. And behold, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Then prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson is taken from Paul's very well-known and famous chapter of Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 11, talking about life in the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. 
You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. Our gospel lesson for this day and also the text for our sermon this morning is taken from John chapter 11 um, where Jesus raises his good friend Lazarus from the dead. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, in the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed, followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping. He was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said on this on the count of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out, cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! Men who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Our hymn of the day is, I Walk in Danger All the Way.
text for our sermon this morning, as we have mentioned, is the gospel lesson for today. Jesus' interaction with Mary and Martha again, and uh, the raising of their brother Lazarus. That story is an early Easter, if you will, story of the resurrection, story of uh, the stone being rolled back from the tomb, and then Jesus raising Lazarus. Have you ever said to yourself the same thing, or thought it, that Martha and then Mary later said to Jesus? Lord, if you'd been around, if you'd been here, things would be different. They said, of course, our brother wouldn't have died. I can still remember after that accident, uh, it was actually the plane crash in Pan American. I don't know how many years ago I was carrying students, uh, students and others back to the United States from study abroad around Christmas time when that plane was bombed and internal bomb and crash. It's a memorial service a few days later that was held in England. The pastor at that time used this text. Lord, if you'd been here, our friends, our loved ones would not have died. Almost like saying, God, are you doing your job? I wonder if those thoughts cross our minds at times when we're faced with crisis, little or now a big one, a pandemic. Lord, if you were doing your job, this might not have happened. Or Lord, if you had helped those people in China do their job better, maybe it could have been better, better contained. Well, Mary and Martha's story is our story. Think about this again. Lord, if you'd been here, and here was good old Mary and Martha. Martha was out there coming right to Jesus. She's the action. She's type A. Uh, listen, when they first heard the story of Mary and Martha, you recall Martha was in the kitchen preparing food that was so very necessary, in a sense, getting the potluck ready for Jesus. And Mary was quietly sitting, thinking, and then sitting at our Lord's feet, hearing his word and was commended for it. Martha wasn't condemned, but Mary was commended more for doing what she did, sitting and listening and hearing the word. But Mary said the same thing Martha did. Lord, if you'd been here, you wouldn't have died. But notice Martha's immediate response. But I know you're still here and can take, can take care of things. I know even now God will give you whatever you ask. That's faith. That's the kind of faith we are called to in these times of crisis. Jesus promises something even now. That as we believe he will fulfill his promises, he'll do it. There are many in our society today who think in our world too, who think differently. They say, some have called it a religion that is moralistic, therapeutic, theism. It goes like this. God created all things and then went on inactive duty. God is interested in your transient happiness, feel good about self and self-esteem. Therapy. God wants you to be good 
and fair and nice. Moralist. God can always be called on back to active duty when trouble or crisis strike. And then finally, all good people go to heaven. Problem. It doesn't take us through the cross. It doesn't take us in humility to the foot of the cross where Jesus died for our misconceptions, our sin, and sometimes our neglect of his work. We need to be there at the foot of the cross, especially in these days. Not with the skepticism that many might have or the impatience. When are we going to begin to get back to normal? But to ask for His Spirit to keep us strong in faith even though we may find ourselves fearful, wondering, questioning all kinds of things. Tempted to say, Lord, get busy. Solve this problem. It's terrible to be sheltered in place, to be cooped up, to know what to do with children when they become antsy and they're not in school and they're so active and sometimes, sometimes some are not even getting their online education yet. Our retirement might become effective might become affected if this doesn't end soon. But again, you hear those words. Fear not, for I am with you. And we hear the story of Lazarus, where Jesus said, Come out. Keep going. I have work for you today. And so we're called. Called to imitate Mary and Martha, and we don't do it alone, but by the power of the Spirit. We do it by listening to His Word, by our prayer, by reading His Word, by staying faithful. That's how the Spirit works, through the Word. And yet, we can say that He will give us the ability to follow instructions to use discernment in our lifestyles in these critical days and even common, that's common sense. And yet to look ahead, to, that the Lord is Lord of all and he keeps his promises to us to ease our fears and anxieties in the name of that risen Christ who walks with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join with me in the words of the Apostles' Creed, that ancient creed that reaffirms again our faith as we do it reverently and completely trusting in God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Included in our prayers this morning will be a prayer for especially all of those first responders and those who care for the uh, ill in our hospitals and nursing homes.
The resurrection to eternal life has come to the world in Christ Jesus, especially in this time of our nation. Let us pray for the deliverance of all and for all for whom he died and rose again. O oh God, as you created everything out of nothing by your mighty word, so you have brought resurrection and eternal life to light by the mighty command of your Son, Jesus, who went through death and emerged victorious over death. Help us to learn from Ezekiel's vision the death that comes when we lose faith and the life we gain through your Spirit. Receive our prayers and thanks for your gift of eternal life in these pandemic days. Help us to live as your resurrection people, bringing the might of your word to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up those who mourn and carry grief and sorrow and the loss of loved ones. Help us learn from our Savior at Lazarus' tomb that death is not the last word of this life, that we rejoice in your promises made, fulfilled, and yet to come, of the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire and bless all called to preach your word and minister your holy sacraments with resurrection power, that they do not grow weary, but grow in compassion and perseverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sake of your word, by which you cause repentance and faith to issue from human hearts, guide the leaders of the nations and communities in our world to pursue the, way, the ways of peace and health, ways that sustain your people throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who are sick or infirm, disabled or troubled, especially those who we now name in our hearts before you. Be with all medical personnel in these days. Breathe your life-giving spirit into all in need that hope, comfort, and peace in you may be theirs. Remind us that our ultimate healing comes from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, O oh Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. At this time, our offering is usually taken. And just a reminder that even during this time, so maybe even at this particular time at home, set aside those offerings, those envelopes, uh, to be brought when we, uh, we gather together again at the sanctuary at church here, or mail them into the office or bring them by one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. You can stay six feet away from uh, Matt, as you bring your offering in. But remember that it is his work we are doing together. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, he cut you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever, and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with us. Amen. We join in eternal Father, strong to save, verses 1, 2, and 4. 